My name is Pat Cooley. I'm going to warn you off the top, my comedy is edgy. Okay? It's edgy. I'm here not to tell jokes, to act like a clown. Okay? I'm a truth teller. Okay? I tell truths. I don't tell jokes. Mallworkers asked me to come do comedy. I said, fuck that. Okay? I'm about shocking you out of your complacency. Okay? This is, you know, you guys are like, work, work, work. Bye, bye, bye. Okay? I told him, I'm not going to do comedy. This is what a comedian does. Okay? Hey, what's the deal with the dating? Is weird. Oh, boom. Okay? This is what I do. I hold a mirror up to society. Okay? Keep that, or don't. I don't care. <laughs> I'm the edgiest comic you're probably ever gonna see, okay? I'm not afraid to say it, okay? I'm talking about you got your, your Lenny Bruce, okay? Or whatever, your little, uh, your Louis C.K. Or, uh, you know, Andrew Dice Clay, the other guy who wears a leather jacket. Uh, compared to me, those guys are about as edgy as koosh balls, okay? Koosh balls, anybody? Anybody? Koosh balls, anybody? Early 90s, koosh balls, anybody? Is that still a thing? Koosh balls? Koosh balls, anybody? Not very edgy is my point with that, okay? Unless you count the, the cushy spikes as edges. I don't know how that works, but they're soft, I guess. Different example. Compared to me, those guys are like troll dolls. But my comedy is like a snap bracelet. The edgiest kind of bracelet. <laughs> and like a snap bracelet, okay, my truths, they snap or grab you by the wrist, and they sting at first, but then after a second, you look fucking cool as hell. Okay? I love edges, okay? I'm edgy. Yeah, sir, what's your favorite kind of edge? Uh, straight edge. Straight edge, that's cute. That's cute. Mine's the cutting edge, okay? <laughs> Let me explain to you what that is, because uh, you obviously do not encounter it very much. The cutting edge is an edge that is so edgy, it slices through other edges and cuts them, creating twice as many edges. The edges propagate, and it goes on and on like that, okay? That's where I'm living, okay? You imagine you take the edge from YouTube, you combine them with Joel Edgerton, our edgiest actor, then you take and slice the edge off of that, a very thin slice, that's like maybe you're 20% of the way towards how edgy I am, okay? Who do you think's edgy, sir, you or me? I'm thinking sledge. Wrong answer, it's me, okay? How many bandanas do you own? For my dog or me? In the whole house. <laughs> The whole house? My house or yeah. this house? What are you at? Under 50? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm an old I own 167 bandanas. Okay? Because this means, so you know, this is funny. This means something, okay? This symbolizes, okay, that I don't have time to comb my hair. Because I'm living, I'm out there on the edge, on the road. I'm a road dog, okay? I'm a wanderer, like Jack Kerouac. Or Miss Frizzle, okay? Miss Frizzle, anybody? Miss Frizzle, at your school bus. You guys remember Miss Frizzle, right? Miss Frizzle, she drove the bus around, okay? Get messy. Get messy. That's what I'm about. My truths are messy, okay? How many bandanas do you think are in this show tonight? How many do you see on stage? One? Well, you're wrong. I got nine more bandanas under here, okay? Is that enough for you, buddy? All right? You know, a lot of people, when they see me do my comedy, they're like, hey, Pat, you're so edgy. We get it. You know? You spend so much time in your comedy shows, or as I like to call it, delivering one of my truth logs You spend so much time talking about how edgy you are and warning the audience that you don't ever actually get around to doing any material. And to that, I'm like, you know, if you wanted me to come up here and be some kind of joke man, then I think you're the joke, man. Okay? That's what I'm about. I smoke 15 packs of cigarettes a day, okay? You're not gonna see me on the radio uh, or on TV, you know, packaging myself for mass consumption, you know, like that, you know? If you're into edges, 
this set is not going to be for you. Edges that remain intact. I'm talking about if you're a professional origami maker, if you refinish antique tabletops, if you're a geometry teacher, if you ever work with Discord. Okay? You can see yourself right out because it's not going to be for you. And if you guys can't handle that, okay, that's fine. You know, maybe you'd be more comfortable with the latest uh, Justin Bieber movie. Uh, maybe that's more your speed, getting anesthetized by the latest uh, popular control -otainment. huh? No, that's fine. It's not for everybody. It's not for me, and it's for you, you know? Like Halloween, you guys are here for some kind of Halloween show? Don't you guys get it? That that's another corporate fraud perpetrated on you? You know, you buy, buy, buy candy, go, go buy a zombie costume, dress up like a zombie. You are the zombies already, okay? <laughs> trick or treat, okay? The trick is on you, and the treat is a corporation's bottom line. They should call it bottom line o -ween. okay? You know, everyone's always talking to me like, uh, you know, they're trying to get me to, to play the game, you know, sell out, buy in, play the game, play along, Pat. You know, they're always like, hey, Pat, this, uh, this Justin Bieber guy, he's the hottest thing, he's the coolest craze, you should get in on this, you should buy his album, huh? Buy, buy, buy. Not for me, man. Everyone's always like, Hey, Pat, you should get your hair cut like Justin Bieber. It's the hottest style. It's the coolest craze, you know? You would look cool. Everyone would like you. You'd be popular. No, sir. People always coming up to me like, Hey, Pat, do you think Justin Bieber's cute? Do you want to kiss him on his big, full, beautiful lips, huh? Do you think he closed his eyes, huh? People always coming up to me like, Hey, Pat, wouldn't you love to see some nude photos of Justin Bieber, huh? Do you think his tattoos are hot? Do you think he'd be a generous lover, huh? Get out of here with that stuff. Don't look at me. People always come up to me like, Hey, Pat, you should go on some celebrity gossip sites and find out what Justin Bieber's favorite club is in Miami and then go down there and hang out outside the back door and someday maybe Justin Bieber will come and he'll see you hanging out there and he'll assume you go to that club all the time and you guys can go in together and spend the whole night dancing and having fun and then if you're dancing real close you can lean in and whisper secrets into each other's ears, huh, Pat? Wouldn't that be romantic, huh? Nah. <laughs> People always come up to me like, hey, Pat, what if you worked in a greeting card store for your day job because comedy didn't pay off and you spent all your time stealing greeting cards and taking them into the break room and writing them out to Justin Bieber to give him some support, send them to his management company so that he can read them when he's having a bad day and instead of licking the stamps, you prick your finger and put a little drop of blood on the back of the stamp so a part of you is going to Justin Bieber and your boss finds out and he's like, if you steal any more greeting cards, Pat, you're fired. You should probably just keep doing it, right? Because then if you get fired, you got nothing tying you down and you can go be with Justin forever, right? I've had it with these people. <laughs> people always come up to me like, hey Pat, did you ever notice how they never play Justin Bieber's music on the radio as much as they used to? Huh? On Kiss 98.5? Even though his latest single, Sorry, is probably one of his top vocal performances of his whole career. And even though if you make phone calls or send emails or write letters, no one responds, you should probably get a steak knife and roll it up into a sock and stick it in your back pocket so you don't cut yourself and go down to the lobby of the radio station and go in there so you can stand there in front of everybody and cut Justin's name into your arms so they can know that he still has fans who care about him and then you go down there and do it and you go in the lobby but then you lose your nerve and you just kind of stand there and a guy comes up to you and is like, what are you doing there, sir? And you're like, I can stand anywhere I want. I've got a freedom of speech. I'm not going to cut myself. And then you're like, why did I say about cutting myself? He didn't ask anything about that. Now he knows I have a knife. And then when he's going over to talk to somebody else, to bring more security over, you just panic and you take the knife in the sock and you put it in a potted plant, you run all the way home, all six miles, and by the time you get home, your mom's like, hey Pat, where were you all day? Weren't you supposed to be at a job interview? And I was like, yeah, I was, mom. And you're like, she's like, well, well, I, well you're all dirty and sweaty then. Didn't you wear your nice clothes? And I'm like, leave me alone, mom. I'm going to my room. <laughs> Not me, okay? <laughs> This Justin Bieber guy, okay? I never even heard of him, okay? So that's where I'm coming from, but I'm, get I'm getting the light, so I guess I'm out of time. So I guess you squares dodged a bullet by getting a, a brain blast of truth with my truth jokes, and we're just gonna have to keep the night rolling and get on with the mall walkers. You guys excited for the mall walkers or what? I got a new album out, you should buy it over there because it's really good. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming out to the show tonight in Sugar City. Without further ado, it's the Mall 